Hi, everyone. Welcome to How to Market Your Clubhouse Experience for Career Advancement. My name is Lynn Murray. I am the Senior Program Manager at the Clubhouse Network. I'm filling in today for my colleague, Christine Monska, Youth Leadership Program Manager at the Clubhouse Network. Christine is feeling a little bit under the weather, so I'm stepping in with her, uh, for her, um, but we really hope you enjoy this webinar. Hello, everyone. My name is Kamal London. I'm an alumni of the flagship clubhouse in Boston, now in Roxbury. Um, I, after, the flag, after my time at the flagship clubhouse, I spent a lot of time traveling. I continued to work on my artwork. I was encouraged by coming to the flagship clubhouse to attend a four-year college at Massachusetts College of Art and study animation. And eventually, after that time, I found my way back here to be the flagship manager of the clubhouse. And I'm just happy to be here, share my experience, and hope everybody has the same experience that I did. Now we want to hear from all of you. What locations are on the line? There are a list of options available. Well, we From our overview of today, we're going to explain what the clubhouse is and why it's important, identify the skills you learn in the clubhouse, learn how to market those skills for professional advancement. We're going to learn how to do that on a resume, in a digital portfolio, and through a pitch. Okay, so let's talk about um, what the clubhouse is and why it's important. So when you speak about your clubhouse experience, you have to tell your audience what the clubhouse is. Why is the clubhouse a special place, a unique place? I often start by telling folks that it's a maker space for teams where they get to create their own projects and use, um, and use technology. Here's a brief overview of the learning model for the clubhouse, and you can intertwine these foundations into your story when you're speaking to someone about what the clubhouse is. Employers are often looking for skills that you've learned here. So when you look at the model, you can see that learning by designing, following your interests, building a community and fostering respect and trust are critical components of the learning model. Describe the clubhouse. Here's a great definition of how to describe the clubhouse and something that I would also use. Uh, the clubhouse is a maker space where I've learned how to use innovative technology like virtual reality, professional music studio equipment, Adobe, the Adobe Suite, Scratch, and photography tools to complete projects with my peers. It is also a space where youth can enter and be themselves be in a safe and creative environment to work with peers similar to the to work with peers with similar interests. Identify the skills you learn in the clubhouse. It's really important to identify the skills you learn in the space. Some of the skills I've learned in the space and I've seen others learn are project design, soft skills, technological skills, and leadership. So project design, here's an example um, on the slide here about design thinking. Um, design thinking is used in a variety of different industries. Um, your audience, whoever you're talking to about your experience in the clubhouse is going to be impressed that you have encountered design thinking while being at the clubhouse. So design thinking is um, a process you can apply to projects you've done in the clubhouse. Um, it's also a huge selling point for employers because they're often using it to test products or to evolve ideas 
So the fact that you have encountered design thinking is a really big selling point um, and a, a marketable skill. The example that I've seen of design thinking during my time in the clubhouse was when one member decided to create a zombie film. And this is a big thing around my time during the clubhouse, um, during my clubhouse experience, where we had one member who had had an idea for a zombie film, the amount of people that he wanted in it, um, an idea of where he wanted it to be placed, where he spoke to several people in the clubhouse about what their ideas are, which goes at um, empathizing what others are interested in the zombie film. He defined the amount of equipment, the amount of people that would be in it, the costumes. He defined like what the actual look of the film would look like. He wrote out storyboards for the film. He um, had a screenplay written for the film. And then once he had all of that together, he got the equipment. He scouted locations for the film, which uh, one of them was above the, in the garage above the, um, the clubhouse. So we got a bunch of people together. He took some test shots to see how it would look, tested it during certain times of day. He filmed all of us in the film doing different acts, acting like zombies, told us how to act, how to sound. Um, we had a microphone to record our voices during the film. And then after that, he went into a process of editing it and some of our software, uh, Adobe Premiere, and you know went through each clip, shortened it, um, lengthened the clip to see what was appropriate. And then after that, he finalized it with some sound editing in the same program and then promoted the film around the clubhouse. And I think this was a great um, idea of design thinking during my time there. Well, soft skills are really important as well. As people continue to design robots to take over manual labor, soft skill development becomes really important. Um, industry leaders have been stating that one can teach technical skills, but skill, soft skills development is much harder. They look for job candidates that have mastered those skills. Some examples of soft skills in the clubhouse include problem solving, which is something that also related to the zombie film that I recently talked about. You had to figure out where you could do certain shots, um, how the equipment was gonna work, if it didn't work, how you could fix it, um, the amount of people that were gonna be available for their film and when they could be available. So it required a little bit of problem solving to, in case something went wrong, you had a way, uh, create a way to create a problem solving to fix it. Critical thinking, thinking about location. Um, there's situations that we have a 3D printer in our clubhouse. Um, you do require, it does require some critical thinking to figure out how long a print would take depending on the size that you, um, depending on the size of it, the, to, um, the temperature of the filament that you're using the 3D print, um, depending on how hot or cold it is, it can speed up the print or delay it. So you do have to think carefully about um, what temperature your 3D printout is when you're printing. Teamwork and collaboration, you're always uh, finding ways to work with different members in the clubhouse, whether you're working on the same project or not. You could be working on a project that requires um, some critique from another member, and that is, in a sense, teamwork because they're helping you build up your project. And a lot of times you may, be, you may want to collaborate with someone who has the same skills as you in the clubhouse. Communication, um, it's always great to talk to other members in the clubhouse. Other members will talk to you about their ideas and you're always sharing ideas with, with each other and learning from each other. Patience, it's great to have patience. That's definitely something you would pick up during your time in the clubhouse. Um, having the patience to work through long-term projects, to see things through, to finish things, to edit them especially, it takes a lot of patience. And adapting to others' needs. Um, Sometimes you may work on a project and you may be in a space where someone else needs the actual space to work on a project. How can you work with that other person to fit their needs and also fit yours together? Technical skills. There's a lot of technical skills that you would pick up in the clubhouse. The Adobe Suite is one of the main technical skills I picked up as far as Adobe InDesign, Photoshop, Illustrator. Um, we have Adobe Animate now, Adobe Premiere, which I previously uh, mentioned for video editing software. There's photography te technical skills you would learn by using a camera. Um, you have Canon cameras that we use in here, and we have a lot. There's a lot of different skills you could pick up with learning how to 
control shutter speed, lighting with the camera, same um, videography, also using cameras for that. You could also um, work with videography by simply using your phone. Sound editing, so using a microphone or um, using recording equipment that allows you to edit your sounds and change the pitch of your sound. Um, pottery, uh, we do have a pottery wheel in here and just learning how to sculpt and work with your hands is a very technical skill. And to be able to work with pottery equipment allows you to do that and understand that. Digital illustration, to be able to use a Wacom tablet or simply a drawing tablet. Um, there's a lot of inexpensive drawing tablets everywhere that could give you the skills to do illustration on a computer. Um, you could do that also combine that with Adobe Photoshop. You can combine that with new recent materials called Procreate on a Mac, I mean on an iPad. So there's a lot of different ways you can incorporate digital illustration. Animation, which is something I specialize in. Um, you can animate in a bunch of different materials, actually. You can do um, stop motion animation, which is basically taking photos and then um, adding, putting those photos together in a video editing software in order to create an animated video out of it. You can do hand-drawn animation and that you can do that with paper and then take it over, uh, transfer it over to the computer digitally and create a um, sort of old school Disney style animation with that. Gaming also uh, applies with animation. Excel and data management, if you, ever have, if you ever have a lot of supplies or equipment you're trying to manage or certain pieces of a project you're trying to manage together, you can put those in an Excel document, add them up, put them on a timeline, and it allows you to better manage your, it allows you to better manage your materials. And it's also something that's um, applied to a lot of jobs today. Game design. There's a lot of equipment you could use to make game design with. Unity is a big software that a lot of people are using today, which allows you to make uh, 3D games. You can do pixel art and Photoshop, and there's many other tools that you can learn game design in. So leadership is often a, um, an often overlooked skill set that you learn in the clubhouse, but it's very present. Um, naming that leadership um, is something that you've gained while being in the clubhouse is a huge selling point to employers. Participation in internships, mentoring, leading workshops, organizing events, or even starting your own um, entrepreneurial um, venture, ventures are all categorized as leadership. And you should definitely think of those skills that you gained as transferable and highlight them when you're talking to anyone about your experience at the clubhouse. So let's ask, what skills did you learn at the clubhouse? I'm gonna give you a chance to choose from a list. What did you learn? We have a few options here, um, and we'd like you to go ahead and tell us what you have learned at the clubhouse. So now that you know how to talk about the clubhouse and identify the skills that you've learned in the clubhouse, you need to be able to market them. So let's start with marketing your clubhouse experience on a resume. Your resume should be tailored to the job description. So you might even want to have a few different resumes for different types of jobs that you're interested in. One thing to remember, formatting. Formatting is really important. You wanna choose one font, one format. Don't use bullets, 
um, one place, the dashes in another place. Make sure that the dates are all in the same format. Um, a mixed format can confuse a potential employer. Um, you want to show them right away that you're organized and that you pay attention to details. Strong action verbs. Um, you designed, you led, you created, you managed. Whatever the task you're describing, lead with an action verb. You also want to record your accomplishments. So it sounds much better to say that you designed and implemented a clubhouse, a clubhouse event that brought in 200 people, um, potential funding, new membership, than to say you managed an event only. Also remember, no spelling errors, no typos. Keep everything clean. So here's an example of Brittany David, an alumni and coordinator from the Gold Crown Foundation. Here's an example of her resume. You can see here that she uses illustration marketing at the top of the resume and very, very clearly states her skills and experience at the clubhouse. Now, I know that um, we don't have time to walk through the entire document um, here, but remember all the slides from this webinar will be shared with you. So you'll have a chance to sort of look more, take a look and uh, look more closely. She's got her experience listed on the left, her education on the right, and there's also like some design and artistry embedded into her resume. So this is an example of a template. So we use, this is a template that we use for our Clubhouse to Career Pathways program. It's particularly helpful for, for someone right out of high school who's applying to college or an internship or their very first job. So you may not have all the experience um, of a mid-level professional or a long-term professional, but there is space here for you to list experiences that you've had. Even out of classroom experiences can be listed here and they count. In addition to creating a resume, it is also an advantage to create a digital portfolio. What to include in a digital portfolio? Roughly 10 to 20 of your best pieces that represent a consistent theme through various mediums. Pay attention to how each piece flows to the next. If you have a paper or physical project, take a picture of it using a professional camera. Include notes about the process of creating the art. Get feedback from peers, if possible, link to Behance, Instagram, and other places where your viewer can see more art. Included here is, a, is an example of a digital portfolio um, from Massachusetts College of Art. And you can see how the um, person's name is listed, their location, it's on Behance, it lists the amount of viewers, but you can also go through and view different slides based off their work. And this relates to what we had just talked about. Um, you'll be able to view this entire resume online. I mean, sorry, digital portfolio online. But when you see it, you also see how certain slides relate to the next. Um, a lot of schools, especially if you're applying for art, are very particular about having your work flow or having it have a certain theme. If you have work that, let's say you design an animal on one page and then you design a comic book on the other, they're going to question what was your purpose in doing it. So if you have a skill in designing animals, uh, let's say you have a passion for taking photos of animals with photography and you have a portfolio and you have a photography portfolio, excuse me, you would want all of your pictures to sort of have sort of an animal theme. So it allows them to see um, a sort of consistent process in your work. So you're gonna to wanna to practice your pitch. Um, you can practice anywhere and everywhere. Um, a pitch has a structure, so First, provide a summary of what you do, where you go to school, the jobs you've had, just a brief summary of who you are. And you wanna make sure to tell whoever you're speaking to what the clubhouse is and its impact on you, what skills you've learned there. Next, you're gonna to want to explain what you want, what your goal is. Do you, are you looking for an internship? Do you want a job? Do you wanna gain or learn new skills? 
And then finally, you wanna provide a call to action, a next step. Would you like to set up an informational, uh, informational interview or will you follow up with a call or are you planning to send a resume? So some places where you might market your pitch, um, a networking event, maybe there's a um, party or social that you're going to, a job interview, you may actually have an appointment for an interview, informational interview, so this is where you're actually uh, collecting information, C career college fair, speaking with a mentor or a conference. Know your audience. So whoever you're speaking to, you want to know, you want to tailor your conversation to who that person is. So when you are telling a future employer or your stakeholder about what the clubhouse is and why it's important, tailor it to that audience. Introduce yourself and what you do. My name is Jordan and I recently graduated from high school with a GPA of over 3.5 and I'm currently doing an internship at Best Buy. Tell your audience what the clubhouse is and its impact on you. I first got connected to, the in to that internship through the flagship clubhouse, a makerspace program where teens get to design and lead projects using technology. I learned project design, music production, and other digital technologies that I apply in my internship helping co consumers creatively problem solve their needs. Explain what you want, internship, job experience, advanced skills. I hope to attend college next year studying engineering or sales. I want to learn from as many professionals in related fields so I can make the best career decisions that align with my passions for data science and the arts. Your call to action. Would you be willing to set aside 20 minutes for a brief inform informational interview with me or perhaps suggest another colleague to reach out to? Practice and get feedback. Be confident and speak clearly. Plan to speak for no more than 30 seconds. Elicit feedback from peers, mentors, and other people in your network. So now that you've heard from Kamal and I, about our advice for marketing the clubhouse experience. We'll end with some advice from coordinators and alumni from around the network. Out of school time experiences like the Best Buy Teen Tech Centers or clubhouses in the world, and even part-time jobs in retail, food service and the like can provide incredibly meaningful learning opportunities for young adults. Employers across industries hold high value for traits like creativity, leadership, and emotional intelligence, often developed in such spaces. It doesn't matter where you learn those skills, as long as you can model and articulate them. Jackie Gonzalez, former flagship coordinator and senior program manager for Jobs for the Future. While you're in the Clubhouse Best Buy Teen Tech Center, you are learning how to use contemporary real world technologies. People from all walks of life are currently investing plenty of resources in learning the technology that is ready available at your Clubhouse or Teen Tech Center. Adding these skills to your resume is not only beneficial, but crucial to your success. When a potential employer reads, when a potential employer reads in your resume that you, are, you, have, that you have experience in app development, photography, VR, AR, et cetera, you are setting yourself apart from all the other candidates in this pool. Astrid Villagran, mental coordinator at the Expo Center. Just about every skill that you learn is transferable, especially the skills that you learn in the clubhouse. Communication, collaboration, software, and technology. These are all things that real world employers are looking for when making decisions about who to hire as future employees. So don't sell yourself short by not highlighting these things on your resume. You never know what kind of doors transferable skills might open for you. Cassandra Rivera, C2C Pathways Coordinator at Gold Crown Foundation. When I created my resume, I thought about what skills I've learned and what I'm good at. The conclusion that I came up with is that most of them, if not all of them, 
tech skills, art skills, and soft skills I learned while being a clubhouse kid and when I came back and mentored. The clubhouse also fostered the entrepreneurial spirit in me. Being a clubhouse member teaches you more than just the latest technology or that wild art technique. It teaches you how to communicate and problem solve as well as many other soft skills that employers look for. Brittany David, clubhouse alumna, digital illustrator and mentor and alumni coordinator for the Best Buy Team Tech Center at Gold Crown. Yeah. So thank you so much for being at this webinar. We um, were happy to spend this time with you. We wanna let you know there are some ways to stay connected. So there's a Facebook group um, for Clubhouse alumni um, that we are always posting offerings and announcements on. There is also our website, the clubhousenetwork.org slash program slash alumni, where you can also download and pick up information. Get your resume reviewed. You can send your resume to um, uh, Christine, who is managing our alumni program. She can review the resume and give you some feedback. You can send that resume to her email address listed here on the screen, cmonska at the clubhouse network.org. We want to hear from you. We'd love to get your feedback about the, this webinar, but also all of our programming and whatever you are needing and wanting um, from an alumni program. Thank you again. Oh, it looks like we have a little more time where we can take questions. So if there are questions that you'd like to uh, share with us now, um, the lines are open for that. We'll stay here for a few moments to see if any questions pop up. So one question, or not so much a question, but a comment we have from Robert Patterson um, is to suggest that all that the interviewee, the interviewee, start with why they are interested in a position and start with lead with their passion. And I think that that um, is so true. Is um, starting the conversation with um, why you want to be somewhere and what makes you excited, I think is an excellent point. I think that will immediately make the conversation more compelling. Would, would you agree? Kyle? Yeah, I do think that's a good point. Um, and you know, they definitely want to hear about why you're passionate about the position, um, what is specifically you're interested in. They also want to hear about what benefits you may bring to the role. So I would also bring that up as well. Mm -hmm. We have another question. Um, I'm a new coordinator in South Florida, um, asking which technology or soft skills are more in demand? Well, for the soft skills, I, I think that um, leadership um, initiative is very a, a big skill that's in demand. I think um, teamwork and collaboration are skills that people want to see as well. In terms of technology, I'm not sure, do you have a, um, Kamal, an opinion about the technology? Um, I would definitely say it really depends on where you're applying to, but also you can use almost any technology and be really efficient at it and still prove your work to a lot of different positions that you're applying for. Um, there have been musicians out there who have used some of the lowest forms of technology and created very high quality work. 
So it really depends on how how often you put your how how much work you put into your craft, and that will really show through the technology, regardless of what you use. But if you really wanted to focus on high-end technology today, um, Wacom tablets are a big thing that a lot of illustrators use in the business. Um, a lot of professionals, as far as music, use Pro Tools. There are 3D printers I use almost everywhere. They're used in schools now. So using almost any type of 3D printer, and there's even ways you could make your own 3D printer, but using almost any 3D printer is a big skill to have in engineering. But there are a lot of skills, but it's really about the amount of crap you put into your work. Yep. You know, and I would also add that um, describing the, the, the clubhouse environment as one where you learned how to be comfortable around technology, where you learned how to dive in um, and learn from other people. I think that's related to, that kind of blends soft skills and technology. Like you have um, gained an ability as a, 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 as a young person now, an adult, who knows, who feels comfortable in environments where there's lots of technology. And I think that's important to also point out. Do we have any other questions or comments? Um, I know there's a lot of expertise out there too, so we have, we'll take a few more. Okay. Well, thank you so much again for being uh, present for this webinar. Keep an eye out for future webinars on topics of interest to all of you. And we hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.